Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be winterizing our camper. But remember, make sure you subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you turn the notification bell on so you get notified every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching. Alright, what's up? Uh, back for another video here. Um, today we're going to be winterizing the camper. Uh, I'm going to go through the steps and uh, show you what we do and how we do it. Uh, we've got a Coleman 17B and uh, this kind of applies for everybody's camper. We just don't have as much stuff on this one as most campers have. Uh, most have like um, outdoor kitchens or whatever, but uh, this is what we've got. So we're gonna start outside um, at the water inlet. But first we've got, um, we're gonna blow the lines out on our camper and I'm gonna dial this down, my compressor down to uh, 30 PSI, between 30 and 40. Gotta go the right way first. I'm shooting for about 35. That way we don't damage any of the plumbing inside and uh, we won't have to do any extra repairs that we absolutely don't want to. So we are about, I don't know, it looks like 33 or 34 PSI. And then I made a fitting that will go into the city water connection. It looks a little something like this. Let me get out here in the light. Um, I'm gonna put a picture in there of the exploded view of it, but it's a garden hose threaded to a half inch and then a half inch coupler, a half inch to quarter inch, and then this is just my air chuck. Uh, whatever fits your compressor is what you're gonna want there. Um, so we'll hook this up and uh, get everything plugged in. Okay, so I've threaded my coupler on give one more tighten all the stuff's tight already and we're just gonna plug this straight into the camper and it'll fill the lines up but like I said we've got it set to 35 psi so it shouldn't mess with anything I think it'll probably hold up to about 60 so okay so we've made it back inside um, the air compressors hooked up it's running as you may be able to hear i picked that air compressor because it's not as loud as my other one um that way if it does kick on while we're doing this it won't be that big a deal um but we're inside <clears throat> one thing to note is if you've pulled out your anode rod out of your water heater um, put it back in you don't have to super tighten it but it'll just blow air through until you hit the bypass line on uh, the back of the water heater. Um, Coleman did put a bypass hose kit on this water heater, so the 17Bs, you shouldn't have to add uh, an add-on kit for it. It's already in there, and I'm gonna show you. Um, you just take off the panel under the refrigerator. It's just two screws. There's one here, one there. And then the bypass hose is this loop right here but typically the water will come in and in go into the water heater heat up and then come back out the hot spigot and then go in the water lines but this one just goes it shuts off that path and turns it into a go around this loop and then it goes down back into the water lines and it's pretty much just for winterizing i don't know what else they would need it for um, other than that so the compressors are running I'm gonna hit these lines on the sink since we're right here you can hear all the air coming out all that extra water pretty clear do the same thing on the cold pretty clear we're gonna run an antifreeze through it here in a couple minutes I'm gonna come do the same thing on the shower just turn the valves on run whatever water's in there 
until it's just spitting. There's the cold. <coughs> Shut that down. Same deal on the toilet. Sounds pretty clear. So that's all the stuff we have on the 17B. Um, a sink. The water heater's drained already. I've got low point shutoffs out there. I need to go do those too. And the shower and the toilet. Some people have outdoor kitchens, like I said. Um, ours is a mess right now. As you can see, we're trying to get everything packed up to winterize. Yes, it's clean. Um, we just got it on Amazon deal day. So, um, but that's the run through on that. I'm gonna start putting some antifreeze in it now. Okay, so we're gonna start putting antifreeze in. Um, I bought, th I actually bought five gallons of antifreeze because I read or I watched a guy do it, and I thought I was gonna do it that way, but I decided not to. Um, we ended up getting the Camco hand pump, and then these are just from Walmart. Um, it's their brand. I did get the minus 50. I think that's probably the coldest that you can, or not the coldest, the warmest that you can buy. They have some that's down to 100 below. Um, we live in central Illinois. I would say if you're in northern Michigan, um, you know, the upper part of the country, you're, you're going to want something a little more robust. I think the coldest I've seen it outside, it was minus 20 in Illinois, and that was a couple years ago, and it was a brutal winter. But the only, the amount of water that i got out wasn't any more than probably a gallon and a half so i'd be surprised if i have to get two full gallons through this whole system um but like i said i did buy five so i've got plenty for later um it should not go bad i don't know why it would it's just antifreeze so we're gonna get the pump opened up and hopefully i can get somebody out to help me film and we'll start putting antifreeze through it okay so we've got our pump going um i started to pump it just to see how hard it was going to be and what i did not really consider was you needed to have something open for it to flow better so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pump the farthest point which is the low point drains i've got a small catch bucket um I didn't have anybody to come out to help me. My daughter's in a Google Meets, so whatever. Um, all I did was pull the plugs off and, like I said, put the bucket under there. So we're going to start pumping some water or some antifreeze. Uh, this is like a hundred times easier now. And when I start to hear it hitting that bucket, I'm gonna stop. So I'm gonna set you up right here. Hopefully you can get it. And I can hear already after just that much that I'm catching some over there in the bucket. We're gonna see what we got coming out. It is showing a little bit of pink starting to come out I'd like to see a little bit more than that so this is if you're doing it by yourself if, if someone's helping you I'm sure it'd be a lot easier so I went to the low point first because that's the farthest away and after that, I really feel like you're not gonna, there's a, there's a good amount. So I've got about an inch in that bucket. Um, and it looks like it's just coming out the cold. So I'm gonna plug the cold up and see if I can't make it come out just the hot. Um, this antifreeze I will put back into a, a jug and 
like I said, this would be easier with somebody else, but here we are. It's starting to come out there now, I can hear it. Okay. That sounded like a good one. We'll go check it again. And then we're gonna run inside, yep. There she's running. I'm gonna plug it up. Put this back in the jug, cause I don't wanna waste it. And then uh, we'll run inside and do the same thing to the sink. So to get from the pump all the way out the back to start with, we didn't use a whole lot. Here's a full gallon. I mean, a third of a gallon maybe. So, uh, which is good. Looking at this, I'm probably not even gonna run through this one whole gallon. So I have enough antifreeze for a while to say the least. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put the bucket back in there. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. Um, I did read that it is good to run some antifreeze into your traps. So I'm just gonna pump. I'm gonna do the sink. I'm gonna pump it. I'm gonna do the shower. I'm gonna pump it. And then I'm gonna try to figure out how to do the toilet and by myself. So I'll probably have to put a weight on it or something just to open the valve up, so. Okay, so we ended up pumping water or pumping antifreeze through the sink, the shower, and the toilet, um, all successful. We did have one spill mishap. Trucks driving by, farming season. Uh, but all said and done, that's what's left of one gallon. Um, like I said, we did have one spill mishap. Now I did not run any through my water pump because we don't usually put anything in our holding tank. Um, I haven't ran anything through that thing since we've had it all year. If there's anything in there, I'm sure it's minimal. Uh, if you run water through your tank constantly, you boondock a lot, uh, you park it out on your property, whatever, and run that water pump, you're definitely gonna wanna put something in there. I would put a full gallon in there and run your pump. Uh, if you put too much in there, it's gonna be harder to get it cleaned out. Uh, I'm gonna run this little bit that I've got left in that jug and I'm gonna put it in the traps, all the traps. I'm gonna put some right in the top of the toilet. Uh, other than that, I think we're done with this video. Um, thanks for watching. Hoped it helped. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.